Let's look at another SAP Cloud Platform service. Hi, I'm Ian Thane. Welcome to another uh, SAP Code Talk. And I'm really pleased to have a new colleague with me, a new colleague, but also for most of you, probably an old face. And that's no, that's no uh, uh, rude <laughs> sentence. <laughs> but DJ, <laughs> DJ Adams, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. And yes, a uh, new colleague indeed. Yes, uh, old face, I'll, I'll take that, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, joined SAP, very proud to be part of the team that Ian's on as well. Uh, the developer relations team of SAP joined last month. It's been a month and a half now. Um, yeah, really good. Excellent. So we're going to talk about another SAP Cloud Platform service, and we're going to talk about specifically the workflow service. So let's hit the ground running, DJ. What's the workflow service? Well, as, as you said, it's it's a cloud platform service. So it, in terms of what it is, workflow you know, means lots of different things to different people. But essentially, if you're familiar with the business workflow mechanisms inside of the ABAP stack, the NetWeaver stack, then uh, you're generally familiar with what the workflow service is and what it is supposed to do. Um, it, it revolves around giving you the ability to string together uh, long-running uh, user-centric or system-centric processes uh, in the same way that, or in a similar way to what the, the business workflow uh, mechanisms in NetWeaver do. So it's on the cloud platform, so that means uh, you know, it's, it's, it's on the public cloud, um, it's cloud native, which which is a you know like all of the uh, SAP cloud platform services, uh, it means that you know you hit the ground running to use your phrase. You hit the ground running when you're building building solutions with these services in a sort of cloud native uh, context, which is great. Multi tenanted, yeah, it's great. Okay, so you mentioned the SAP business workflow already. Why do we need another workflow service? Um, this, this question comes up quite a lot, and, and for, for good reason as well. Uh, in fact, the answer I'm going to give is only a very small version of what Christian Luz uh, talked about. He gave a talk um, this week, which is uh, the week, uh, the first week in April. Um, we can put some link, links in the show notes to his talk for ASOC, where he he gave a talk on you know what to use where, and the whole the whole premise of the uh, talk was that the fact that, as you rightly point out, that this business workflow on the NetWeaver, on the ARP stack, um, uh, there's also, of course, BPM, which is the Java stack uh, NetWeaver system, which is also an on-premise uh, based system. And now, of course, there's, you know, on the SAP cloud platform, there's the workflow service. It would take a long time to, to go through all the different uh, aspects of why you would choose what where. But if you look at the, you know, the nature of Business workflow uh, in uh, in the app stack. That's that's first of all that's on premise only. Secondly, it's quite closely tied to uh, the business processes and the business objects. It's sort of application oriented uh, within the app stack itself. Um, really, uh, it's that that particular uh, business workflow mechanism uh, supports user centric application workflows, but it doesn't really support system-centric workflows, nor does it uh, really, is, as it, it's not really designed to support sort of cross-system uh, or cross-solution workflows. So if you, if you imagine uh, where we are now with, with the cloud platform, we have uh, not only sort of cloud-native services on the SAP cloud platform, but we've got all the different uh, software solutions out there out there like Reba and you know, Hybris and Fieldglass and Concur and as well as S4 HANA on-premise or S4 HANA Cloud. So you've got all these different business processes running potentially across um, all these different systems. You know, success factors is another really good example. And so if you're looking to build a solution uh, that involves workflow across different systems, for example, then obviously the SAP Cloud Platform workflow services is your go-to uh, you know, solution for that. So, you know, horses for courses. Okay, okay. So how about if you give us a quick talk through on some of the work so workflow, do you mean my teeth aren't into that, my <laughs> workflow <laughs> service features? Um, so I suppose there's, there's different aspects to 
the set of workflow uh, service features depending on your if, you, if we go through it from a persona's perspective for example so you know you might be a workflow developer a workflow you know, developer or designer uh, you might be uh, you know a workflow administrator or you might be a, a you know a workflow participant so if you take the, the first one first um, there's a really nice uh, plugin for the you know for, for the IDE of choice uh, in, in on the SAP cloud platform which of course is the SAP web IDE full stack and you can use that to design and, and, uh, and create workflow definitions in a really nice way uh, that the, the plugin supports this thing called BPMN 2.0 business process model and notation 2.0 which you know, if you've seen any sort of screenshots of workflow definitions with boxes and lines and arrows and different flows and so on and decision gates that's what we're talking about here so there's a, you know, there's features of the workflow um, story on the cloud platform include really nice design time tools when you come to runtime um, there's of course the the workflow engine itself which runs on the sap cloud platform there's a really nice uh, api uh, which sounds like you know for many things you know you think oh yeah there's an api as well as, as an afterthought but actually the api is absolutely central to and essential for you know the success of the workflow service um, and then you have sort of built-in tools like this, the workflow monitor, where you can you can look at uh, definition workflow definitions. You can look at running workflow instances. Of course, from a from a workflow participant perspective, uh, they they have to interact with user tasks within workflows, and uh, they have the My Inbox app, which is a standard Fury Launchpad app, where they can you know participate in uh, workflow instances uh, that that are, that are that are running and have them as as recipients, as, as participants. When you look into the workflow definitions themselves, <clears throat> um, there's all sorts of um, mechanisms and features that you can use. So, for example, there, there's, there are four types of tasks. There's a, there's a user task, which we've just been talking about, which, which, which approves a purchase order. Um, there are uh, script tasks which allow you as a uh, you know workflow de developer to manipulate the context of a running workflow in JavaScript as it's you know, through its lifetime. There are service tasks where you can call an external service, uh, and that external service can be SAP or non-SAP. Uh, and then more recently, they've introduced a mail task, which of course you know as you can tell from the name allows you to send mails. And there's all sorts of other supporting features of a workflow definition. Um, We've mentioned one briefly before uh, this idea of you know, gateways where you can make decisions to say, well, I'll go down this 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 route of the workflow tree or this route depending on the circumstances. You have all sorts of things like boundary timers and mechanisms that allow the workflow to stop and wait for an incoming message and so on. So, for a workflow service that's actually less than a year old, I know if we look at the the business workflow on the app site, that's you know x years old i've no idea it's old almost as old as me um there's the uh business uh process management uh collection of services on the java stack that's around 10 years old um so you know the workflow service on the cloud platform is relatively young but for its age has a ton of features Okay. Okay. So I think you may have alluded uh, to the answer of this this question I'm going to ask you, but I'll I will ask it anyway. Can we get to this from anywhere? You know, where is, is there a, a particular entry point to these services? You know what that uh, that, that that question um, I gave a uh, a quick talk on uh, the workflow service to ASAP as well, following Christian's one I did mine yesterday, mm. yesterday Wednesday, um, and this question came up in a couple of different guises. Uh, twice, and uh, so you know it is an important question. And yes, you're, you're right. Uh, the answer involves the, the three letters API. Uh, in, in order to kick off a workflow instance, uh, you, you can do that from an app. But what is app doing in the background? That's actually making a call to the workflow services API to create a new instance, for example. Uh, you can also build your own uh, you know, workflow inbox app, for example, to allow users to process workflow uh, user tasks differently. So you, you can run it from anywhere because I think, I'm just wondering whether, whether the phrase, if I can use the phrase API first, the, 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 the workflow um, uh, service itself was built almost in an API first way. Mm -hmm. 
there's um <laughs> my dad's just come to the window. No, come in, come in. Michelle, <laughs> Michelle at the door. That's all right. Michelle, your dad's here. <laughs> well keep that in, that's really good. That's a real light. Um so well, we, had, we had Craig try to get on the call just before. Uh, we did, yes. And he's done that before to Meredith. So, yes. so, yeah, no, what I was saying was, that, yeah, where was I? API. So it being a very API-focused uh, service, like a lot of the other different services on the cloud platform, you know, it, it's almost a natural uh, next step to say, well, actually, what else can we do with it? How can we reach it from outside of the, of the standard set of tools that we, we have? Okay. Okay. And just in closing, um, um, because I want to try and keep this short for the for the podcast. Little plug for podcast yes, there. Podcast. Uh, so where should we go to uh, learn a little bit, more, little bit more about this? I'm assuming as you join the team, maybe you're going to be doing some tutorials. Uh, yes, going to be. Doing, there's a tutorial, um, a set of tutorials on uh, the developer area already. Um, I'm hopefully going to get in some more, but um, if we can put some show notes in, um, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll put a, a link to a, a blog post which has a link, uh, which has itself links to all sorts of different things. Basically, get a cloud pl uh, a cloud platform trial account, uh, instantiate the workflow, so enable the workflow service. Um, the documentation is pretty nice, actually. Uh, so there's developer documentation, user documentation, and administrator documentation. Uh, go there. Um, uh, and the API documentation itself, if you're, if you're a developer, if you're a hacker like, like I am, then you know, have a look at that as well and, and, and use Postman, for example, to start sort of poking it and see what it does. Uh, it's, you know, it's different, depending on who you are, there's different ways to get started with the workflow service. So you know, uh, look at the blog post and that'll, that'll, that'll send you right. Excellent. DJ, thanks for joining me and uh, speak, speak to you again soon. Thanks, Ian. I'm going to have a cup of tea with my dad now. <laughs>